She was a young woman with a big smile and big plans for the future. The Facebook page of Amber Rose Fusco talks about becoming a licensed nursing assistant, going to college, one day opening her own salon. And the very first thing she mentions is how she loves spending time with her children. But that was then. And this is now. Fusco is preparing to spend serious time in federal prison, away from her son, her daughter, and everyone else she loves. On December 20th of last year, a woman walked into this bb and bank on Lakeside Avenue. After allowing a few customers to cut in front of her, she walked up to the teller and handed her a note. I need $10,000, no die packs, make it fast, no alarms, or else. The woman then showed the teller a chrome revolver and told her to hurry up. The clerk handed her more than $1,000, which the robber took and left. Three days later, just two days before Christmas, the same thing happened at the Wells Fargo Bank in the 4900 block of West Broad Street. The woman didn't show a weapon that time, but handed the clerk another threatening note. I need large bills. I have a gun and will use it. You have 30 seconds. This time, the suspect made off with $4,400 in cash. That bank robber was Amber Fusco. She was captured two months later in Vermont, but not before she had robbed three additional banks in that state. So how does a young woman, a mother, become a serial bank robber before she turns 30? A search through court documents reveal Fusco's journey to federal prison actually began years ago and appears to have been fueled by a drug addiction. When you're toxic, when you're on a, a drug frenzy, all bets are off. and no telling how it can end. Between July of 2011 and December of 2017, Fusco was convicted of committing a dozen crimes, not including the bank robberies. That long list includes assault on a police officer, disorderly conduct, theft, and driving under the influence. But perhaps the most disturbing incident happened in August of 2017, when she was arrested three different times in one week. One of those arrests came after police responded to a call of two women slumped over in a car. Inside that vehicle, officers found a glass pipe, white powder, a needle, and a two-year-old child. It was Fusco's daughter, and officers determined that not only had she done drugs in front of the young girl, but that at one point, Fusco had left the toddler alone in the vehicle with another drug user so that she could go buy alcohol. That doesn't surprise me. It happens all across America daily. This is just a terrible example. John Schinholzer runs the McShin Recovery Foundation. He has no connection to the Fusco case, but says the behavior described is typical of someone whose life is controlled by substance abuse. When you put your child at risk like that, that was a good indicator this woman has a deep illness. Fusco was charged with felony child cruelty and ultimately found guilty and sentenced to two years in jail, but all but 20 days were suspended. In December of 2017, just a couple of months after she was found guilty of child cruelty for doing drugs in front of her two-year-old daughter, Amber Fusco set out on a crime spree that would take her more than 600 miles from home. In a court filing, Fusco says she was in the throes of a heroin addiction at the time. She claims a man named Andrew Welton Jr. was her dealer and that he convinced both Fusco and her friend Jennifer Bassett to drive with him from Vermont to his hometown of Richmond to buy Christmas presents. They took two cars and Welton's young child went with them. But one day before they made it down here, the group made a pit stop in New York City. On December 19th, Fusco, Bassett, and Welton entered a Manhattan jewelry store. Fusco tried on a $35,000 Rolex watch and then took off running. Security caught up to her and got the watch back, but she got away and eventually met back up with Welton and Bassett. The very next day, the young mom robbed the first of two banks in Central Virginia. Court documents show the group had a similar plan of attack for both heists. Bassett would drop Fusco off at the banks, park nearby, then serve as the getaway driver. But after the December 23rd robbery, Fusco got out of Bassett's car, changed her clothes, and got into a silver Ford Fusion with Welton and his child. She had about $4,400 in her purse, but something else was in the bag, a GPS tracking device the teller had attached to the stolen money. That's a wonderful thing for law enforcement. If we can see the motion of a, uh, of a GPS pack. Richmond police could tell they were heading for the Forest Hill Avenue toll plaza. 
So they blocked traffic and began checking cars. But because Fusco, Welton, and the toddler did not fit the description of the suspects, they were allowed to leave. But a short time later, police realized that the Fusion was the car they were looking for. They caught back up with it and after a brief chase arrested Welton near the intersection of Patterson Avenue and Nala Road. But by that time, Amber Fusco was no longer in the car with them. She and Bassett eventually made their way back to Vermont, where in January, Fusco robbed three additional banks in similar fashion. That is unusual for someone to come to a locality that is hundreds of miles away and, and just return home. But the FBI was hot on her trail. After getting Bassett's number from Welton's cell phone, agents were able to use another GPS tracking device to track her and Fusco down. Fusco was captured on February 18th and almost immediately confessed to her role in the robberies. Addiction can be a very powerful thing and something that a lot of people can't overcome. A broken person who used drugs to escape a life of pain. That's how Fusco described herself in a court filing earlier this year. She blamed a childhood filled with chaos, substance abuse, and violence. A judge is going to take all of that into consideration. Ron Hosko is the former assistant director of the FBI. I think the judges are sympathetic to the notion that somebody's a mother. It would be better, probably for her, a better excuse if she was feeding her family with the, the stolen money rather than feeding a, a drug addiction. In June, she reached a plea deal with prosecutors, and last month she was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. It's always a very sad thing to see someone like this who has a young child going away for so long. CBS 6 legal analyst Todd Stone says she could have received a whole lot more. When you show a weapon to someone who's working at a bank, that's the sort of uh, threat of violence that... Uh, really makes it, brings it to a different level and makes it more aggravated. In addition to the prison sentence, the judge has ordered Fusco to pay back the money she stole and she must enroll in the Bureau of Prisons 500-hour intensive drug treatment program. When she's released, she'll have to participate in drug and mental health treatment programs approved by the U.S. Probation Office. Her young children will likely be in their late teens by that time. Experts say it's unclear what kind of impact this will have on them psychologically. Children are very resilient, so hopefully the damage won't be that great, you know. But there will be some, absolutely.